It's ancient. This looks untouched. This could be bursting with clues about ancient people. <sighs> of course, there may be a curse. It would be the curse of... Bill by the Science Guy. Brought to you by Lasco Premium Crushed Berry Cave Paint, fortified with bone meal. Last for eons. Humans have lived on Earth for hundreds of thousands of years. Now, wherever they live, eventually they leave. They move on. <laughs> they go somewhere else. Now, wherever they go, they leave stuff behind. By studying the things that people leave behind, we can figure out how they lived, what they knew about the world, what they knew about science. Now, the study of ancient people and their culture is what we call archaeology. <laughs> Many of the objects that get left behind last a long time. Like, these walls are almost a 1,000 years old. The small objects that archaeologists find are often called artifacts. That's from old Latin words that mean made with skill. So take a look at this. It's our simple archaeological dig of science. And this is an artifact. See, most of the artifacts that archaeologists find are buried, usually by floods, winds, or sometimes on purpose. So archaeologists have to carefully unbury them. Now, once they get the artifact exposed, archaeologists keep careful records of exactly where it was. Now, the best thing is to leave an artifact right where you find it. Because where it is might tell us how it was used. Like this could be the piece of a pot that was used in this kitchen. Or maybe this was a dining room or, or even a restaurant. Table for two. Anyway, once in a while, after carefully keeping track of exactly where the artifact is, scientists collect these artifacts carefully and we store them in here. It's a museum. This pot is from that same area. It was built up, painted, and then fired to make it hard. See how it's not that different from pots we use today. Archaeology can tell us a lot about ourselves. In the ruins of ancient villages, new discoveries are being made about humans, about the ways in which our prehistoric ancestors lived. They said I'd never even see one. And now, She's mine. Let's say I'm on a dig and I uncover your mummified body. Would I want to put you in a museum or cover you back up? Bachelor number two, did you hear the question? Hello? The Sands of Time, covering up lost civilizations. Glowing, glowing. Mm -hmm. Oh. A lot of the artifacts that archaeologists find are broken. <clears throat> now, by putting the broken pieces back together, archaeologists can figure out something of their history, maybe how they were uh, broken. So this is our broken simulated archaeological artifact of science. And it was broken by accident. Anyway. After the pieces were swept up, I mean, I mean, after the pieces were carefully excavated and cleaned, each piece was cataloged and labeled so that one day the artifact can be perfectly reconstructed. Oh. Okay, hold on. 
Well, maybe not perfectly. But anyway, by reassembling the fragments, archaeologists can reconstruct the big picture. This artifact fell off a truck. Okay, okay, it, di okay, it didn't fall off a truck. It's what archaeologists call broken in transit. <laughs> Archaeologists can learn a lot about the past by looking at old trash heaps. We found some garbage dumps that were used thousands of years ago. Scientists figure that the oldest stuff is on the bottom and the newest stuff is on the top. Studying what people threw out can tell us a lot about how they lived. You can do the same for you and your family. Let's get some old clothes and some thick gloves. And then what do we do? Look in your trash can. <laughs> Let's see what we've got here. Mapping paper. Toenail clippings. Birthday hats. Nose hair. Streamers. Yeah. Bows. Mm -hmm. And birthday cake. Mm -hmm. So I know someone had a birthday party, yeah. but I don't have all the information. This is the problem that archaeologists face all day long. So they try to figure out the whole story from little pieces, like these. <laughs> Did you take out the garbage? Oh, I took out garbage. What if somebody finds it? No worry, they won't fight it for a million years. Richard, this is a hand axe, uh, very similar to the tools made in Northern Europe by Homo erectus 300,000 years ago, one of the very first tools made by humans. Actually, it's also one of the very first tools made by Binford. When Binford uh, came along, they uh, made the 6100 a lot like this um, long time, well, yeah, a long time ago, the Binford 61. Huh. Yeah. You can tell them because they were trying to recreate the Ripley shock waves right here. That's, uh, that's how they, they molded that. So they, they did it by chipping, just like chipping one rock against another. It would take days to make a tool like that. Just think of those ancient cave people desperately chipping knowing that their survival depended on their ability to chip. Just fills me with anxiety. Yeah. This is Native American rock art along the Chutes River. People have come here and trashed these rocks. They have painted over our ancestors' drawings. We're going over the graffiti with different colors. The orange is used for the spray paints. All of our pictures will be put together and they'll go back to the archaeologists. Hopefully you can get the spray paint off and keep the, um, the petroglyphs. When we say something like this old pot is 5,000 years old, how do we know? Well, please consider the following. Scientists can figure out the age of something like this with radiocarbon dating. See, every living thing, you, me, plants, and trees, and the wood that became this charcoal have a lot of carbon in them. Now, carbon's like anything else. It's made of atoms. Atoms are tiny pieces of stuff. And atoms are made of even tinier pieces of stuff called protons and neutrons. Now, most carbon has six protons and six neutrons. We add them up and we call it carbon-12. Here's the thing. There's another kind of carbon with six protons and eight neutrons, and we call it carbon-14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Carbon-14, or radiocarbon, is slightly radioactive, and it's natural. It's just a little bit radioactive. That makes it unstable. So carbon-14 breaks down into carbon-12. So let's say that this uh, pitcher of jelly beans is like carbon. Most of it is carbon-12. I like these black licorice flavored ones. But some of it is carbon-14. It's like these yellow, tangy lemon ones. <laughs> I'll, I'll separate. So as long as a living thing is alive, the ratio between the amount of carbon-14 and the amount of carbon-12 stays about the same. There are about 180 carbon-12 atoms for every carbon-14 atom. 
But as soon as a living thing stops living, the carbon-14 slowly goes away. Now, archaeologists can take advantage of this. By figuring out how much carbon-14 is left inside of something, they can figure out when it stopped living. Like when the berries that were inside this pot were picked. Thanks, radiocarbon dating. <laughs> I mean, thank you for joining me on... Lab work is essentially detective work based on the findings at the site. This is Simon News. Dateline, Egypt geologist uncovers the tomb of an 18-year-old king. Tutankhamun Tut's grave is one of the rare unlooted finds of a carefully cataloged. Please. On things like televisions and video recorders, a lot of times we just use symbols, no words at all. Well, this is not a new idea. In ancient Egypt, thousands of years ago, they had a system of pictures called hieroglyphics. Each picture stood for a sound or an idea. It was kind of like an alphabet. But here's the thing. People moved around and languages evolved until eventually no one could understand hieroglyphics, not even Egyptians. Not until the year 1799, French archaeologists were in a place called Rosetta, and they came across a very large stone tablet that had three languages on it. We call it the Rosetta Stone. It had Greek, Egyptian script, and hieroglyphics. French archaeologists who understood Greek were able to figure out the Egyptian and eventually the hieroglyphics. It's kind of like having the instructions to a television or a video recorder in a couple or three different languages. You can use one language to understand the other one. Uh, it's kind of like a Rosetta Stone. <laughs> Here, solutions de problemas. Solutions to problems. Chase, can you read this? C. Spot. Run. Very good. Yes, it's Hooked on Hieroglyphics, the new easy-to-use learning technique that's teaching children and adults the world over how to read hieroglyphics. Just dial 1-800-FISH-EYE-BIRDFOOT-WHEAT-ARROW- Archaeologists deal with some pretty old things made by people. That's because people have been around a long time. But just how long is hard to picture. Let's say this pog represents one year. Well, most people live to be about 80 pogs old. But 80 isn't very much, just a drop in the bucket in human time. Scientists figure that humans have been on Earth about 3 million years. Uh, Bill, uh, be real careful. 3 here. million pogs. Uh, Bill, <laughs> just. Uh, you want to play? Uh, be, be real careful. If you had this many, Bill, you'd never run out. B Bill? Just go, please. We're at Wapaki Pueblo in Wapaki National Monument. The site is about 100 rooms and about 200 people lived at the site at one time. What we're looking at here is a petroglyph. Uh, petroglyphs are made by taking one rock and hammering another rock on top of that rock. <laughs> The site itself is an artifact. The walls can tell us several things about the people, how far they were going to get material for mortar, uh, social organization, and just a number of things like that. Uh, so whenever anybody destroys a part of that, part of the, the story is taken away, and it's hard to piece together. Some of the most interesting things that archaeologists find are in garbage. See, garbage is like a snapshot of what was really going on, because people throw garbage out without thinking about it. Huh. Looks to me like they were having a party. Looks like there was a party here, too. These are seashells, uh, like clams and oysters. They came from down here. Humans gathered them up and carried them up there to get the meat out. This layer is a midden. It's like a seashell dump, and it runs all the way down the hill. By systematically digging things up, we can figure out who was here, when they were here, what tools they had, and if they had contact with people from Europe. Yeah. See, archaeologists figure out the big picture. 
one tiny piece at a time. When an artifact is found, it is brushed clean and studied in place. Its exact location is pinpointed, then it is carefully removed. Any clue that can possibly tell more about humans at this site or about their past environment is kept, cleaned, examined under magnification, sorted, and catalogued. There's a lot of bones in a city like this. After a while, most of them just decompose and quietly disappear. Occasionally, some will pop up when you least expect them. My name is Luna, Luna Van Dyke. It's a Dutch name for archaeologist. I was boning up with my Native American basketry when the cop walked in. I thought to myself, this could be trouble. Or maybe he just wanted my help. He said he'd found a skeleton at a construction site, but he wasn't sure what to make of it. I told him, I'll take the case. The copper had one thing straight. He was dead all right. But I took one look at the bones and knew the cops would never find a driver's license for this guy. His skull was shaped differently than yours or mine. Slightly larger jaw, eyes set further apart than usual. I found arrowheads, even scraps of a sleeping bag made from woolly mammoth fur. It all added up. I told the cop that the victim was male, five feet tall, and approximately 5,000 years old. Bones tell stories to an archaeologist like me. Sometimes dead men do tell tales. The fossil record is yielding a human record. A vague glimpse at our own beginning. Old skulls represent a journey into human antiquity, older and more primitive than the last. Ancient and modern people often built buildings that archaeologists can study. And these places were often temples to honor rulers or gods. They were centrally located. And their construction, the methods of construction, and the years and the time and effort and energy that the people put in to building the buildings tell us a lot about the people who built them. Uh, these people weren't tourists. No, these people lived there. They worked there. They did business there. They worshiped there. These buildings were vital, and they stand the test of time. That's why archaeologists can go there and study them. I mean, they were built to last. Now, the layout of the roads around the building often tells us a lot about what was important to the people who built them, what sort of structures they might have built for defense, the kind of things that, that, that they needed to be aware of whenever they were laying out a city or a town or, or any sort of structure. <laughs> hey, thanks, Chase. Great job. Thanks for laying that out. I mean, the ancient buildings tell us a lot about the people who built them. Bachelor number three. They say you can judge a man by the size of his skull. If this is the case, are you more Australopithecus, hmm. Homo habilis, or <laughs> Homo sapien? Bachelor number three. Bachelor number These buildings are built in exactly the same way the pilgrims built them about 400 years ago. By reconstructing the buildings with the same tools and methods that the pilgrims used, archaeologists can figure out what their lives were like, how they raised their food, kept their livestock, baked their bread. Ouch. Cut their lumber. How they kept hay in a cool hay thing. Yeah. There, concept, with the yeah. movable roof. Gotcha. So on. Right. And these are, uh, these are sheep. So this right here, mm -hmm. this, in a sense, uh, is a Plymouth rock. Because see, because we're in the Plymouth Bad colony uh, recreation. Archaeologists are usually able to find only a small percentage of the artifacts that were originally there. So what will future archaeologists, say uh, 500 years from now, be able to find when they try to find out about us? Well, they might find some printed words. Might find some music. Maybe some pictures. Bam, bam, bam. A lot of times in archaeology, we find cookware. But if most of this stuff disappears, 
What artifacts will future archaeologists be able to find? Armies of tiny plastic people? Bicycles that don't go anywhere? Enormous buildings where people gather for large ceremonies. Tens of thousands of people gather here every week. Do they sing? Do they vote? Do they worship agile warriors that move a ball around a wooden floor between fishing nets? our show thanks for watching if you'll excuse me i'm gonna walk where ancient people once tread Whew. see ya produced in association with the national science foundation and all these structures were set up to capture water now do these guys carve that out or, or did it come that way it's a question it's an archaeological question look look at this angle see they, they understood that right angle Good thing I brought my snake bite kit. Where's my snake bite kit? Ah, help! Is anyone there? Help me! It's a snake! Oh, wait. wait it's, it's just a stick. <laughs> it's just a stick. There we go. It's just a stick. I'm okay. It's, it's just a stick. Fine. <laughs>